Well, hello there, everybody out there on Facebook land. So good to see you. This is Going Fit Bit by Bit.com. And I'm happy to see you for our first online meetup of 2018. We have so much fun stuff to talk about tonight. So good to see you there, Christine. Um, glad to have you on board. Great to hear about your success, too, uh, so far with Fitbit and um, with losing some weight, especially because you're just getting on the program. Great to see you, too, Robin. So listen, guys, tonight we have some exciting stuff to talk about. I am coming to you from uh, New York City. You can probably hear people in the background, plenty of noise, so my apologies if you are hearing a lot. I am uh, here enjoying my Dunkin' Donuts uh, coffee. And as you can see, when you are on the uh, Going Fit Bit by Bit uh, program, nothing's actually off limits, um, but we just put everything into our Fitbit as we move along. But let's talk about what we're going to talk about this evening, okay, folks? Because uh, we have a lot of important stuff that's all brand new. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, tips for hassle-free calorie reduction throughout the day. And I have a new topic for us, and that is dealing with hedonic hunger. Hedonic hunger, okay? Um, as opposed to metabolic hunger, which is a little bit different. Um, so, uh, what is hedonic hunger? Okay. So you ever wonder why late at night, right? You come home uh, after work late at night uh, and you have cravings like mad uh, and you go and you hit the whatever it is. You hit the bag of chips, you hit the uh, chocolate cake that's in the fridge. Uh, maybe it's chicken cutlets for you. Whatever your thing is that you hit, you go and eat quite a bit of it. Um, well, think about it. Why is it that we can have those cravings um, late at night when we get home, but very rarely, and I mean, you know, raise your hand if you've ever had it. Anybody ever wake up in the morning, and the first thing you pop out of bed, you run immediately downstairs, and you binge eat? Yeah, never happened to me. I've never binge eaten first thing in the morning. Well, why is that, right? Um, I'm going to suggest, I mean, after all, think about this for a second. If you've had a normal night's sleep, you've been sleeping at least six to seven hours, right? So if you've been sleeping six to seven hours, um, your stomach is arguably empty or near empty, right? So metabolically speaking, uh, you should be extremely hungry, right? Uh, so why aren't we binging first thing in the morning? Why don't we have that uh, incredible, incredible feeling? Uh, hey there, Mr. Muller, you looking for a Boston cream? All right, all right, let's see if we can get that for you. I'm all the way in New York City though, so it's gonna be a little cold by the time I get it to you. Um, but why is that? So, so why aren't we binging first thing in the morning? Uh, and why are we binging when we get home uh, at night with all, with all those stressors? Well, and a lot of people just say, oh, well, we're stressed out and that's why we're eating. Well, yeah, we're stressed out, but it, it's actually a different kind of hunger that we're having. And um, they actually call it hedonic hunger. We're eating uh, because of hedonism, um, our own hedonic uh, desire uh, to eat. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, the reasons for this, well, first of all, the reasons on the surface, and then we're going to talk about the reasons what's what's happening on a cellular level. The reasons on the surface, of course, um, are fatigue, uh, lack of sleep, stress. Uh, this is something that's very interesting, though, that's ha actually happening. Literally, what's going on um, is that your body, uh, your 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 body on a cellular level, is anticipating that delicious binge that's about to occur. And in anticipating the binge, uh, your body is releasing dopamine, okay, into uh, the bloodstream, into, into the brain, okay? And in, in releasing the dopamine, okay, and getting ready for the binge, right, you're starting to then feed it, right? And you're feeding it with normally sugar, uh, sometimes high fructose corn syrup, uh, oftentimes salty as well. Uh, and then that's releasing more dopamine. Right, and that is uh, continuing on with the binge, okay? And that's why we're binging with that food and we're beginning to have that good feeling, right? And then we're continuing with the binge and continuing with the binge. Metabolically, there's no reason for the binge at all. Metabolically, we're filling up right away, we're full. We're having a leptin response, right? The hormone leptin it is coming back in a, uh, through to us saying, we're full, we're full. Now, some of us, like myself, don't have that leptin response very well at all, right? That, le that, that leptin response just doesn't occur for myself and many other people who, who have obesity, right? Uh, 
And also what's happening is, but binge-wise, right, we're having that binge response of dopamine flowing through our brain saying, yeah, keep up the binge, keep up the binge, keep up the binge. Well, that's what this hedonic uh, hunger is all about as opposed to metabolic hunger, okay? Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind and remember, right? Metabolic hunger is typically leptin-driven, that's what they call it, leptin-driven hunger, right? Because it's driven by that leptin hormone, whereas hedonic hunger is emotionally driven, and for our intents and purposes, we're gonna call that uh, dopamine-driven hunger, okay? Uh, so those are really our two different uh, kinds of hunger. If you um, interestingly, this hedonic hunger, right, as we said, it's actually creating the response in our brains before we even have the binge, okay? Just knowing that we're going to binge begins to create the dopamine response. Uh, the surge continues, especially it continues when we eat what's called the highly palatable foods. The highly palatable foods are those foods that are designed to create the binge in the first place. These are these snack foods that have been designed for the binge. Uh, things like Fritos, things that come in packages, things like Oreos, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, any of those foods that were designed to be addictive. Um, they, by the way, are designed not to allow us to have a normal hunger satiation response, okay? The ingredients, by the way, the ingredients that are causing us not to have the normal hunger satiation response are some of the following. Um, and I call them I call them the dirty five. Okay, these are the dirty the dirty five or the dirty six, okay? Um, first and foremost is sugar. Right? Um, but why is sugar so bad? Okay, so first of all, if I, again, if I'm declaring a war on any particular ingredient or food, I'm declaring a war on sugar, all right? Uh, because sugar does four horrific things to us, okay, when we eat it. And these are the four horrific things. First of all, it creates resistance in our bodies to insulin, okay? When it creates resistance to our, uh, to our bodies to insulin, um, that that is heading us down that road towards pre-diabetes and becoming diabetic. So that's the number one issue. Sure. Number two issue, it's creating a resistance to leptin. Okay, and what is leptin driving for us again? Leptin is what's driving our metabolic hunger as opposed to the hedonic hunger. Okay, so in eating the sugar. Right, we're actually doing ourselves damage by creating resistance to leptin, right, which is worsening the issue around metabolic hunger. Okay, so that's the number two that sugar is doing to us. Number three is sugar is not helping us in terms of creating the satiation, right? So when we're eating the sugar, whether it's within a binge or not within a binge, right, and we are actually hungry, we are actually responding um, not, not to a hedonic hunger, but we're responding to a metabolic hunger, right? As we're eating the sugar, the sugar is not doing anything to actually satiate us, right? So that's the number three uh, 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 bad news uh, thing that sugar is doing to us when we eat it. And the fourth item, and this is uh, proven out through scientific study, is that sugar actually causes addiction in many people. Not all people, but in many, many people, sugar causes addiction, right? Literally, people become addicted to sugar, right? So because of those four reasons, because it creates resistance uh, uh, to both insulin and leptin, because it doesn't give us satiation, because it causes addiction, we really need to eliminate as best as possible sugar from our diet, okay? Sugar is our number one enemy. Okay, now, other than sugar, what else um, are we interested in reducing in our diet as much as possible? Let's talk about these other dirty five very quickly. Uh, who can guess them? Next up, hydrogenated oils. All those hydrogenated oils, those manufactured oils um, that are in packaged products, generally speaking, if it's packaged, we don't want to eat it, right? And if you look at packages, you look at their ingredients, you're going to see, you're going to find hydrogenated oils. Um, they're the source of all of our trans fats. There are very, very, very few trans fats that actually occur naturally, and even those trans fats, generally speaking, we don't want in our system. Okay, and for those of you who think it's funny that I'm talking about this at a Dunkin' Donuts, and that, the reason I'm doing that is this whole point is that um, on goingfitbybit.com, uh, 
nothing is actually completely off limits when you're using the Fitbit and when you're losing weight. That, that's the point I'm trying to stress here. There, it, this, is, this, is not about, this is not about some ultra-restrictive diet um, that you go on to and then one day you sort of come off of, right? No, 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 no. You're just making a life change, right, about being more conscious about your eating, okay? So hydrogenated oils is that next one after, after sugar that we just really need to eliminate as best as possible. The third one is another kind of sugar, right, that we need to get rid of. So if it's another kind of sugar, I'm sure uh, many of you folks can guess it, and that's that high fructose corn syrup and those other kinds of sweeteners that we need to get rid of, right, um, uh, in high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup, by the way, is, is a, is a uh, uh, syrup, uh, corn syrup, that they actually uh, boil down until it's exceedingly sweet. Um, it has also been found to be addictive, and it's just a horrible, horrible uh, sweetener for us, um, and it messes with our uh, brain in, in horrible ways. Uh, also, again, another sweetener. Oh, and by the way, high fructose corn syrup has those same issues that sugar does. It causes resistance to insulin and resistance to leptin. Uh, it doesn't create satiation in us, and it also causes addiction. This next one is interesting, though artificial sweeteners and artificial sweeteners can be on these labeling packages in many different ways they can be dextrose it can be sucralose uh, it could be the, the, uh, the more uh, uh, popular brand names um, we need to stay away from artificial sweeteners as best we can okay and then artificial preservatives artificial preservatives uh, listen they put artificial preservatives in because they're trying to make things last longer for us and keep the foods from spoiling. Uh, of course, there is an advantage to that. Nobody wants to see spoiled food. Um, however, we need to stay away from them as much as we can. Um, often you see these artificial preservatives in things like cured meats, right? So generally speaking, limit cured meats in your diet um, and you're eliminating, you're, you're eliminating many of the artificial preservatives. And last but not least, and you actually rarely see this product anywhere, uh, anymore, but MSG. But you know where you do see it? You see it in things like hydrolyzed proteins, you see it in things like actually yeast, uh, and so on and so forth, but MSG's last week, okay? So, these are all things we're gonna stay away from. But you may be asking a question, here, and that is, and oh, by the way, when you do have questions, let me just take a quick sip here. When you do have questions, please feel free to send them to Bill at Going Fit bitbybit.com. And when you do have questions about any of these different online meetups that we have, please send them to me. I'll be free to answer them. Tonight, by the way, we are picking the name um, of the winner uh, for the Ulta HR Fitbit. Okay, we're giving away that Ulta HR Fitbit tonight, so I hope you have registered at goingfitbitbybit.com because we're pulling from the, uh, from the uh, customer list. You don't have to purchase anything, but we're picking from that customer list uh, over at goingfitbitbybit.com uh, tonight. Um, so I'll be pulling that name and then we'll be posting that. Uh, to, uh, you know what, I will post that name uh, tonight uh, on the website, goingfitbitbybit.com. If you go to that website, you'll see the name that gets posted tonight, the winner, and then I'll get that shipped out tomorrow. So please take a look at that. So go out to goingfitbitbybit.com, and you'll see the winner uh, tonight posted uh, on the website tonight. I'll make sure I get that done. All right, so now, all right, Bill, so you told us all these things that we're supposed to avoid. How about some strategies for how to do that? Great. Let me talk to you about some strategies that have worked for me. Uh, okay, first and foremost, is um, avoidance, uh, avoidance and uh, the creation of environments where the food doesn't exist, okay? So yes, I'm sure many of us have done this already, but we have children uh, who may, be, who may uh, want slash need some of these things. First things first is I try to replace a lot of these addictive foods um, with replacements, okay? And let me give an example. I'm a Fritos lover, I'm a corn chip lover. Great. Okay, Fritos and corn chips are my thing. I came across this uh, product called HertzRawFoodCentral.com. So that's, uh, I'm sorry, that's just, yeah, I think it's uh, RawFoodCentral.com or HertzRawFoodCentral.com. Um, he makes a great product called Flax Crackers. These Flax Crackers could not be more wholesome. Um, they're a little high in carbohydrate, but they're the good carbohydrates, right? And uh, it's an all-natural product. It's an all-natural food. 
And you know what? If, if, if I'm going to have some hedonic um, hunger and I'm going to be starting down uh, a road of binging, if I start in on the flax crackers, I find that I might eat five or seven or eight of those. And because it's not a highly palatable food that's been designed to be junk food and designed to make me eat more and more and more and not be satiable, right? I tend to eat five, six, seven, eight of those flax crackers and then I feel full and I feel satisfied and it tends to help end my binge, okay? So that's, that's the first thing is look for foods to replace your junk foods and put them in the same spots that your junk foods currently exist in your home. So as an example, out with the Fritos in my house, in with the Kurtz Raw Food Central Foods like the Flax Crackers. Uh, Chips Ahoy were my thing. I love the Chips Ahoy, I love the Oreos, okay? At my home, out with the Oreos, out with the Chips Ahoy. A great replacement for that, you ready for this? A great replacement for that? Homemade oatmeal raisin cookies. Homemade oatmeal raisin cookies, why? because we're making those homemade oatmeal raisin cookies. Now granted, they have sugar in them, right? But they have real sugar in them, okay? They don't have high fructose corn syrup in them. They don't have artificial sweeteners in them. They don't have preservatives in them, right? I'm eliminating all of those things out of them, okay? Um, they have oats in them. They don't have hydrogenated oils in them. They have butter, okay? Um, and I find that instead of eating, you know, starting out at three Oreos and then working my way to seven, eight, 12, 15 Oreos before I know I've eaten an entire bag of Oreos, right? I might have two giant, you know, oatmeal raisin cookies. And you know what? I feel pretty good. They were a delicious cookie. I've, re I've rewarded myself, right, with my big homemade oatmeal raisin cookies. You know, I feel better, right? And I have not ruined everything that I had worked for so hard all, all day. So once again, replace those junk foods that are already in your house with foods that still will be satisfying for you, but don't have all those nasty ingredients in it like we went through. Sugar, hydrogenated oil, hot fructose, corn syrup, artificial sweeteners, artificial preservatives, and MSG. Okay, so that's my first, that's my first tip. Avoid and, and create environments where food doesn't exist. Next tip. I firmly believe the size of our kitchens and the placement of kitchens at the center of our homes is in direct relationship. If you saw one of my other online meetups we talked about since 1963, we talked about since 1963, uh, uh, I hope everybody's still hear me because I just started, but since 1963, in fact, somebody would be great if somebody online here could say, could say to me, yeah, Bill, we still hear you. But, um, the, the uh, instance of obesity has gone literally from, I think, almost 23%, all the way now, ramped all the way up into 2010, I believe that's up to 59% uh, in this country. You know? And one of the base, thanks Don, I appreciate it. And one of the reasons for that, I firmly believe, is if you take a look at the size of the kitchens that are going to be built homes in this country, right? The kitchens have gotten larger and larger and larger. The fridges have gotten larger and larger and larger. Uh, uh, everything has gotten larger and larger and larger around that central kitchen in this open floor plan, right? And so as a result, everybody congregates where? In that kitchen. Well, one of my strategies is when I come home at night, and now my family kind of knows this, I do my best to walk right by that kitchen. Now, typically, I've already had dinner, right? But I try best, and so is my family often. So I try to walk right by that kitchen, right past it and right upstairs uh, to the second floor where my family would be watching TV and we can spend time on that second floor far away from the kitchen and where all the food stuffs are, right? That makes it much more different, difficult to get up during the commercial and to go and snack. Uh, we had a quick question about replacing butter with coconut oil. It's not something I do. Maybe a great suggestion, something I can take a look at. Uh, but no, uh, butter does have saturated fat as opposed to unsaturated fat. We love unsaturated fats and much more than we love saturated fats. But uh, we are not opposed to any fats uh, uh, in general, um, as long as we're eliminating the, sa 
as long as we are limiting the saturated fats to some extent. Uh, okay, so that's another that's another thing that, that I, I do is I avoid by just just walking around that uh, that kitchen all together. Okay. Uh, other tips for this uh, for this uh, calorie restriction as we move along. Um, Beware of fat-free products. So if you go out to goingfitbitbybit.com and you get on one of our programs, by the way, we guarantee 28 days, 28 pounds, 28 bucks. You get on our program, we guarantee you lose it and get your money back. Okay? Listen, when you get on that program, do not avoid fat. We do not want you buying fat-free fat -free products. Why? Because when you are eating fat-free products, you're not satiating yourself, right? You wake up in the morning and you put a fat-free milk in your coffee. Now, if that's just the way you like it, fine. But you're putting a fat-free fat milk in your coffee and what you really like is cream. What you're doing then, you're drinking your coffee and you're not getting satisfied. You're not getting what it is that you really want, right? And then that's not going to be any good because then you're going to be tempted to snack. So we do not encourage people to, to, to go away from fat, right? We want you to stick with fat. Fat is our friend, okay? Fat is just fine, okay? Uh, fat provides needed and necessary nutrition. Unsaturated fat is excellent for your cholesterol. Unsaturated fat is fantastic for your cholesterol. It's also fantastic for your triglycerides, okay? That's what unsaturated fat is great for, okay? It drives those numbers down, it drives the, the, uh, the, HDLs, uh, the HDLs up and the LDLs down, okay? And that's what you wanna have, all right? Um, here's what we will tell you to do, though. You're one of those folks that uses the flavoring in your coffee? Go ahead and check that. I bet it has some sort of artificial sweetener or high fructose corn syrup. Get rid of that crap. That is horrible. Right? Again, you want to get rid of the artificial, stick with the natural, keep the fat. When you're thinking of your macros, and what do I mean when I talk about macros? When I talk about macros from this point forward, right, we're talking about protein, fat, and carbs. Those are the macros. Protein, fat, and carbs are the macros, right? Every every food is made up of one of those three things, right? But sometimes we also think of fiber in that as well. Right? What we're going after when we go after protein, when we go after foods, is we're looking for foods that have protein and fat, right? At every meal, we're looking for protein and fat. If we can get some fiber in there too, great, great. And then if there's carbs in that meal as well, I'm always looking at how can I eliminate the carb? Because the carbs come whether we want them or not. Okay, what do I mean by that? What I mean is if you start designing your meals around proteins and fats and getting fiber as well, there is almost no way to eliminate the carbs, okay? Because when you're looking to get your fibers, you're gonna end up eating vegetables, you're gonna get your carbs. When you're looking to get, when you're looking to get um, your fibers, uh, you're gonna end up having some fruits, you're gonna get your carbs. When you're looking to get your proteins and fats, you're gonna end up having some dairies, you're gonna get your carbs, right? Uh, uh, the, the only foods that tend to not have any carbs at all tend to be just your lean meats, your fish, your fishes, uh, and, your, and your animal proteins, okay? Uh, nuts are a big one that we love to eat. Nuts are big one that we love to eat, often very high in, in good fats, and then also the proteins, okay? But always think of your foods now when you get on the 28 days to lose 28 pounds, right? We always think of your macros, and, and by the way, your coach will work with you on this as you're working on your meals. Think of your fat, your protein, and then fiber, and if you have the carbs, you're looking to eliminate the carbs, right? Okay. Now, last but not least, here are some other tips that I'm using, and I've used these since June 30th of 2016 to help me lose the 150 pounds that I lost until December of 2017. And by the way, I'm still losing. Hey, and everybody out there, I don't know if you saw me this morning, but the videos are out on goingfitbitbybit.com, and they're also out on YouTube under Bill McDade, and you can also find me on Facebook if you go through my post, right? But we're doing 6,000 by 6.com. You know what that is? That's 6,000 steps by 6 a.m. every morning. So you wake up at 6 a.m., you hop online here with me on Facebook, 
and I work it out. And we do 6,000 steps by 6 a.m. It's a great way to get everything done on your tracker first thing in the morning. That way you got a nice big head start. Oh, and please link in with me on Fitbit. Um, we'll get you in on groups and we'll do, you know, challenges together and everything else, all right? So let's do all these things together. All right, now here's the last parts of this. Um, these are the last parts of some of the tips that I use, and I use these things almost every day, okay? These are small things, but each of these little things that we do make a big, big difference, okay? And then I'll end with my favorite thing that I do, all right? Uh, <clears throat> next one, small plates. Small plates. What do I mean by small plates? Order small plates at a restaurant? No, no. What I literally mean is, you know how everybody has a like a big dinner plate and then a small dinner plate? you know, like, like as part of your, your dishes, we almost never use the big dinner plate at my house anymore. Everything now is served on the small plate, okay? And, and we do that on purpose because it, it, it makes our portion smaller. We, we literally put less food out on the plate, okay? So that's, it might sound like a dumb thing, but it makes a difference over the long haul. Use your small plates. Don't use your big plates anymore. Use your big plates only for serving plates, like, you know, for the whole family, right? Small plates. You ready for this one? Small utensils. Yeah, that's right. We use like dessert forks and all. We use like only the baby spoons on it, right? Now, I have small plates, right? 13, 11, and 7, Will, Andrew, and James. Do I let some of them use the, like the regular utensils? Of course, of course, of course. They're not the ones that are, well, maybe not all, but the, you know, generally speaking, they're not the ones who, who have to work on their weight machine, right? I'm the one that's one. Right? So I'm the one who uses the small utensils. Use those small utensils. Use those small utensils. Because the small utensils lead to the next thing, which is what? Small bites. Small bites. All of these things, by the way, lead to the next item, which is mindful eating. Mindful eating. Don't, don't sit down. Don't sit down your meal and just do this. Don't sit down your meal and just do this and, and this and this, you know? Have mindful eating. Be thinking about it every time something crosses those lips. Think to yourself, why am I eating this? What are the macros in this? Oh, the macros in this are generally speaking just fats because this has cream in it. I drink my coffee just with cream or just black. That's how I drink my coffee. And everybody at the ice rink knows it because they see me with my coffee cups all the time. Just black or just with cream. Mindful eating. The other thing is a little extra chewing. A little extra chewing does a couple things. One, it gives you the mindful eating. Why am I chewing a little bit more? Mindful eating. Two, it aids in your digestion. It helps the rest of your digestive system out as you go. Three, it gives your rest of your system a little bit of a workout, your jaw and everything else. All right. Next one. Always put your food into your Fitbit. Always put it into the Fitbit app here, right? Here's the Fitbit app, right? Get your food into the Fitbit app. And here, here, I'm, here I'm, I've, had a, I've had a very low food day today. I'm only 650 calories in. I've been very busy at work today. Here's my coffee with cream, large, Dunkin' Donuts. This is, uh, oh, this is an evening thing. 120 calories saved. Always put it in there either before, preferably before, or while, okay? So that's how fast, by the way, I put my food in. I'm up to 770 calories for the day, which for me is pretty good. You know why it's pretty good? Because now I can go and have like three or four of my Globe Ultras, and uh, I'm gonna be up around, uh, you know, maybe a thousand calories, and I can have a can of tuna, and uh, maybe a little cottage cheese, and uh, you know, I'm gonna be up, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna easily, I'm gonna easily be under my uh, 1,000 calorie, uh, Low for the day, and that's good because you know I'm shooting get now under 180 pounds, right? And look, my steps, my steps aren't that great for today. My steps aren't that great. My steps are only 8,800. I'm telling you, I had 6,000 of those steps by about 6:45 a.m. So you can see I have not had such great steps today. All right, let me just continue on. Get a few more of these, and then I'll let you all go for the night. Um, always get that food. Do yourselves a favor, make a commitment to walk every day. Whether that is parking your car at the farthest spot that you can find all throughout the day, or whether that is when you start to get a little frazzled, take yourself for that even that 10 minute, 15 minute walk can make a difference. And dude, put it in your app. 
Put it in your Fitbit that you're actually going for a walk. Let it show up and count as a workout. Let it show up and count. Hey, it makes you feel better. It shows up as a, as a walk, and it does count. If you just walk for 10 minutes, that counts. So let it show up as a walk. Walk every day. That's important. Oh, this next one's big. Drink, drink, drink water. Drink at least 500 milliliters of water. That's half a liter of water. That's about, that's about, drink about this much water, this much water before every meal. Drink this much water before every meal. Why? It begins to fill up your stomach and your system. It begins to set up that leptin response of making you feel satiated and happy. So that as you're eating your food after that, right, your stomach's filling up and you're getting that feeling of feeling satisfied the food can do its work, okay? Please drink that before every meal. I'm telling you, if you do these things, you make these little changes, it goes a long, long way if you're trying to lose a little bit of weight. Okay, um, get up from your desk at least every 60 minutes. Now, if you've got one of the Fitbits, it'll give you an alarm. It'll get alarm you every 60 minutes. Give you a little alarm. Get up. Guys, all you got to do is get up and, you know, walk 50, 60 feet. It's just important to get up and walk because what you're doing is you're eliminating the possibility of having any um, uh, blood clots forming in your, in your legs and the rest of your body. So getting up and walking is very important. All right, these last three are very important, then I'm going to let you go. This first one, and I had a client today, I know, I know that they're struggling with this, so I'm going to say it to them again. Forgive yourself. It doesn't matter if, if you had a hard day, it doesn't matter if you binged, it doesn't matter if you ate too many cookies. Forgive yourself. You are doing a good job. Just the fact that you got the Fitbit, the fact that you put it on, the fact that you started into the program, heck, it, I mean, this particular client's only been on it like less than a week, he's already lost like five or six pounds. Give yourself a break. Be moving in the right direction. Love yourself. You deserve it. Be good to yourself, forgive yourself, okay? Um, this goes with the next one. Be persistent. Be a persistent son of a bitch, right? Every day get in there and fight the good fight. Listen, I probably lost weight four out of every seven days. I lost weight four out of every seven. Two out of every seven, I didn't lose any weight. One out of every seven, I gained weight every goddamn week. So you know what that meant? When I was losing 150 pounds, every week I gained weight. Think about that. Every week I gained weight. How the hell did he lose 150 pounds if he gained weight every week? Well, because I gained weight one day every week. But I lost weight four days every week, right? Be persistent, persistent counts. And this last one, well, this last one I'm pretty good at, as many of you know. This last one is be sure to sell them. Celebrate your victories as they come along because in life, you got to take care of yourself. So every time you do have a little victory, be sure to celebrate it. Whether that's enjoying a nice cup of coffee, whether that's saying hello to a friend, whether that's just stopping to smell roses or looking out at beautiful Manhattan. All right? Be sure to love yourselves. And remember, it all starts with victory. Hope to see a whole bunch of you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. 6000 by 6.com. Get out there.